who um, is a man who lives a life of imagination and belief and hope, and that is what he uses to fuel his inventions. And and uh, what happens is an event takes place in his life where he starts to lose all hope and he abandons uh, beliefs that wonderful things can happen. And uh, later in his, uh, a little bit later in his life, his granddaughter comes into his world and she reignites that that passion for belief and imagination and and uh, uh, believing in oneself. And that's really, that's really kind of thematically what the movie's about. Gustafson is his apprentice, and what he does is he ends up taking, Andronicus has a large book of uh, diagrams and formulas and, and um, uh, graphs of the inventions that he's made and inventions that he's, uh, that he's planning on making. And Gustafson uh, takes the book, he steals the book from him, and starts his own company and his own empire using Geronicus's inventions. And so that, that's, the, that's this, this huge overarching event, this, this, this kind of cataclysmic event that takes place in the beginning of his life. And, um, and then it all kind of starts to unravel from there. My character's name is Gustafson, and he's a, a very ambitious, uh, in the beginning of the story, a very ambitious, wide-eyed young man who uh, also wants to be an inventor. And uh, much like his, uh, he's an apprentice to Geronicus Jangle, who's the greatest inventor uh, ever, uh, so certainly in Gustafson's eyes. And he wants to become um, an inventor, and then what happens later in life is uh, he, through some, some you know, sense of maybe a lack of self-worth, makes a bunch of decisions that aren't helpful in his life. But now, even though he has wealth and he has fame, he's a guy that uh, is very much about appearances. Inside is a very sad, kind of broken person, but he's all about height of fashion, um, very, very, uh, he's always Depeche Mode, if you will, you know? And he, and he sees everything that, if I put more glitter on it, more gloss on it, more entertainment to it, uh, it, it, maybe it'll be okay. It never is, so he keeps on trying and keeps on trying. First two musicals I ever did were uh, in high school were musicals. I did Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat, and then I did Godspell, if you're sensing a theme. Uh, I went to Catholic school. So <laughs> and then, um, and then uh, the next musical I did was in 2004, and I performed, I, I did a musical, a Shakespeare musical that was about Romeo and Juliet, and it was it was really the time of my life. I've been looking forward to this, and now I'm in a position to have to, to. I'm playing, I'm I'm playing a song and dance man, and so it's I, I get to be a song and dance man, which is really just beyond. I'm just really thrilled about this whole experience. They're being surrounded by dancers, and you get to do them. I always wanted to be the person that gets to do like the six moves in the middle, and then the rest, then they do flips, and then people think about that you can do flips. <laughs> yes, so you know, so it's really. Um, it's really, really exhilarating. You know, dance rehearsals have been really great. And, and the choreographer, Ashley Warren, is, he's really lovely. And his staff, they, they just, and the good thing is, they kind of just, they just kind of run you in there. They just go, hey, nice to meet you. Have a second. So we're gonna do this, that, and you're gonna move like that. And you're just, oh, oh, and you're just in it. You're just in it. So that way, it's been very comfortable because you're not, I, I was gonna get like, oh, I have some trepidation about the dancing. And then they just, they just run in it. And they're lovely because they just go, you can dance, anyone can dance. And, then it gives you some confidence, so it's been great. I've been having a really wonderful time working with David and Lynn. David's super collaborative, and really, but also uh, uh, he's been very, very good with with the notes. So he'll give you a note, and it and it will hit something inside of you and go, oh, I can I can identify with that, and then you can merge it with the character. And we've been really great. It's, you, he's very good at kind of taking your side, having a little conference with you, just helping remind you to how to connect the dots. And he's 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 been wonderful, just wonderful. You're seeing people of color being represented in a way you have seldom seen. I've seen people of color in movies that are set in a periods, but not when they're the focal point of it. And also not when, to, for, them to, for, for us to care about their emotional journeys, their lives, their hopes, their dreams, and, um, oh gosh, I'm hesitating to say this. You can cut it out if, I, if, if you don't want to use it. But um, um, it's just nice to see people, people of color working in a period piece and they're not slaves. It's really a wonderful thing. The story's about them. There's no comment made about it. It's just about the acumen of these particular artists and what they're gonna do in this particular project. And that really excites me. It's one of the reasons I said yes. I was like, oh, Victorian era? Oh, it's a musical? Oh, uh, Phil wrote the music? Everybody's black. 
<laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm in. <laughs> you know, it was, I couldn't, it was really, I think it's brave and bold and needed. One of the main themes is um, with, with the help of my family or the help of those who love me, I can restore this wonderful aspect of humanity in myself. We should all have hope. And it's, it's, uh, so it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, um, uh, not benchmark. What's the word I'm looking for? It's one of the foundations of this story. I, I feel that he was a person who, who, who lost hope, uh, lost a sense of belief about himself. And in the end, it pulls him back. And I, and I can, I can, I see that. That's something that resonates with me. I really identify with Jessica because I see her making an effort. She's, she's trying to push forward and, and um, when you think about the number in the, in the show, make it work again, it really gives me chills because it's about people, it's like when you apologize to somebody because you're really, really sorry and you really, really mean it. And that is not an easy task. And to see someone say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna be vulnerable. I'm gonna admit that I love you, that life was better when I was happy that this isn't working and I could do something that is working. And she evokes that, you know, she, 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 she's, there's a bravery in that. There's a bravery in showing that kind of vulnerability to let her daughter visit her father. And I think she's, um, I think she's really a, really a terrific character.